Smart Charts and Smart Charts Pro are tools that allow you to graphically illustrate to your clients and prospects exactly what's happening in the real estate market. Smart Charts is able to display pricing, sales, time on market, and other metrics of interest guiding towards smarter decisions. These market statistics make it possible for you to become the local market expert and answer questions with the help of powerful data analysis tools. Don't just tell your clients how the market's doing. Use Smart Charts Pro to show them. The biggest difference between Smart Charts and Smart Charts Pro is that Smart Charts displays market data at the regional and county levels, where Pro can drill down to as local as subdivisions or school districts. To jump in and sign up for Smart Charts Pro, you can do so right from brightmls.com. Go to the Bright Premium menu and select Smart Charts Pro. You can also sign up for Smart Charts at GetSmartCharts.com. To start with the Smart Charts that all Bright subscribers have access to, choose the free statistic link below and then walk through registration. During that registration, be sure to indicate that you're an MLS member and enter the requested Bright details. In order to fully customize and regionalize your statistics, you'll want to upgrade to Smart Charts Pro. Smart Charts Pro subscriptions come with a 14 day free trial, and you'll enter either a monthly or yearly package to begin after the trial expires. Smart Chart subscriptions provide stats at the Mid Atlantic regional level. These stats are divided into three sections. The dashboard, which displays monthly statistics, charts that are easy to use and create graphically illustrated metrics, and then run either a detailed or local market insight report types. For the rest of this webinar, we're going to log into a Smart Charts Pro account, and I'm going to walk you through some of the best features available using Smart Charts Pro. Let's get started. When we start typing in the change location box, you'll notice that here I'm putting Centerville in, but I have a lot of other options below. This is where you can search for region, county, zip, or even subdivision. Pulling up Centerville, Virginia updates the dashboard chart and report screens with statistics for that specific region. First thing we have on the dashboard are our market gauges. Here with closed sale, we see that our January closed sales are falling below the five-year average. Over here, we have months of supply. If there were zero additional listings entered, this tells us how long it would take to go through the existing inventory. We can see here the market would be dry in less than a month. Use the scroll arrows to either the left or the right of the market gauge box to scroll through and view additional metrics. Our median list price looks like it supports little differences between our month and our five-year averages. We like to use median over average because it provides a more accurate statistic to use for metrics. By using median, you lose the extreme highs or low listings that can throw off your numbers. You can also click to remove or show the gauge needles here. Any one of these individual gauges can be embedded on an external source, like a website. Click the embed link here to the right and select your metric. Then select the update type. Once you have those, you're ready to copy and paste the below code into your source. Keep in mind, you may need assistance from your website provider to do this. Here's an example of using these embed codes and you also see other features like charts, which I will point out later in our training. Further down, we have Spotlight. This shows important metrics and how they compare to the previous year and month. The month over month may be more volatile than the year over year due to the seasonality of real estate. If you're still new to an area or if a buyer asked you to research a region outside your normal farming area, then the year over year is typically where you'll want to focus. Your five year contract snapshot in this case is showing a decline in contracts each year. We can see that January 2020 has the second highest closed sales compared to current pending listings. 
As a local agent, you'll speak to what may have contributed to these trends and how it may relate to the situation you're currently in. Explore presents data on two query points, a metric and then some geographical preferences. I'm changing my location to Northern Virginia, and I'm going to choose the metric for median days on market and cities for my geographic preference. It's important to point out that with Smart Charts stats based on sold data, if there are no sales, it will show up as null. Here I'm going to sort by the year 2019, and you can sort by any one of these columns. Here you see the list of cities within the Northern Virginia region. And if I come over here to Remington, Virginia, we can see here that there is a percentage of change between 2019 and 2020 of 55.6%. Uh, we could drill down further on any of these by clicking that city. Not only does that take us to Remington, Virginia, but it switches us further down to a different geographic preference. You'll see zip codes. Now, now in this case, Remington may not have been the greatest example to select uh, since I only have one zip code in the region, but you get the gist. All of the zip codes in that area will always display here. And lastly, for dashboard is selecting export. Uh, this will automatically download all of the data that shows in a CSV file, and it can then be used in any other program or even manipulated in Excel to create customized reporting. There are two report types, detailed reports and the local market insight report or LMI. Let's start with the market insight report. When using Smart Charts Pro, you can select individual report types. To find out what structure types fall into attached townhouse, for example, you'll access the definitions help page. To get there, click on your account, then support, and you'll find definitions right here. Instead here, I'm going to use condo co-op. And while I could go back pretty far, I'm going to leave it as January 2020. This creates a PDF report. The header has the report title and your information is pulled over from the MLS to display at the top of the report. If your account is missing key information like phone number, email address, or broker is incorrect, you'll need to visit your Bright account and settings to update your contact details. You can see here that the new listings, closed sales, and median sold pricing statistics help you show, not just advise your seller, how the market affects your recommendation for a list price range. The five-year days on market average data is helpful for understanding how competitive the market is currently within the context of the last five years. All of the stats here give insight and can support your recommended price range in any listing presentation. Let's go back and generate a detailed report for the same area. We have four different report times ranging from monthly to yearly, and we're going to select quarterly. You can choose any quarter, but we're going to go ahead again and stick with the most recent completed quarter and generate our report. This report is broken out into four different tables, sold summary, financing, days on market, and sold detail with comparative active detail. You can see that the percentage of change is displayed in sold summary table, comparing the most recent year with the previous year, in this case comparing quarters. Average SP to OLP ratio is one great way to help identify how correctly a listing agent may be pricing a home. The days on market sold shows a faster moving market in 2019 compared to the previous year. We can also run the same report for 2018 and 2017 and compare to gain insight into market patterns over longer periods of time. The sold detail table is broken out in detail by structure type groupings. We'll return back to smart charts. Next, we have charts. With charts, you have a lot of options, and the more you use charts, the more comfortable you'll become with it. Definitely play around as much as possible. Let's say I have a 30-something millennial who is looking for property, and they want to stay in the four to $500,000 range. So here I'm going to look at pricing trends. 
This buyer will also consider multiple areas in the Northern Virginia region. So I'm going to change my primary area to Arlington, Virginia, the city. I have three additional areas that I want to compare. Here in the compare location box, I can add additional regions. So I'm going to add my three cities here. Let's add Manassas City. And once I start adding locations to compare, the chart will no longer allow you to add additional metrics. So this button here is going to be grayed out. Next, I'm going to add Centerville, Virginia, the city, and Fairfax. I can remove any compare location entry. If I want to change my primary location, however, I would need to do so up here in the change location field. So let's change Arlington to Alexandria. You can change and adjust the metrics view. Uh, first here, you can see we can show anything from one month all the way up to 10 years. I'm going to keep one year and change the total view from months to quarters. I do want to acknowledge that while I'm using cities, you're most likely more often going to use these metrics to compare more specific locations like subdivisions or school districts. You can hover over each one of the columns on the chart and it will give you these statistics. Right now I'm looking at the median sold and it does look like Centerville consistently closes within the four and 500,000 range we're looking at. Do note that while you cannot add additional metrics when comparing multiple locations, you can switch between say sold and active, for example, median list price. And again, hovering over all of these will still tell us that Centerville is likely the best place for us to look for our millennial buyer. We don't have to stop here. If you want to find out how hot the market is, check your supply and demand statistics. This saves you time from going into Bright Search and doing the research yourself. Appraisers would find this beneficial comparing long-term market trends. And we know the prices in Centerville are some of the lowest, but the inventory is low, likely for the same reasons. This is valuable information when deciding how flexible sellers in that market may or may not be. Another question you may ask is how long do listings stay on the market comparatively? Switch to days on market, and we can see here that Centerville and Fairfax, Virginia, have the fewest days on market while Manassas by far stays on the market longer. I've reset my geographical location to the Northern Virginia region. We're still looking at quarterly, but let's say that I had a seller who just brought their house a few years ago. They need to sell and they have to get the most money back out of the sale of their home. If we switch to something like monthly here, we see a more visual representation of the seasonality in the market. When looking at all market activity, we can change this to show three years and we can really get a good look at the highs and lows in the market over long periods of time. Switch the chart type to line and you can really see the dips. While the dips really are fantastic, you can go from actual values to the change from and choose either per year or even per month. This is an even better visual representation. Let's go back to actual values. Let's add some metrics. I'm going to add new pendings to the current closed sales display. And let's change our home type to attach townhouse. Change the pricing trends to show one year. And then we can view by quarters. There's one more chart type and that is the data itself. As you've seen, there are a lot of great ways to use the Smart Charts Pro. I encourage you to take some time and explore the dashboard, chart, and report smart chart features. There's one thing left, the three ways that you can share your charted statistics. You can download the data itself in an editable Excel file or the chart itself as either a PDF or PNG image file. Like the gauges we showed in the beginning of the demonstration, you can use the embed code to add these charts to an external source like a website. And last but certainly not least, the ability to share online with your social media websites. We hope this brief webinar helped you with getting up to speed on Smart Charts and Smart Charts Pro. Should you find yourself needing additional guidance, you'll be able to access your account at the top right where there is always help and training on the support page. 
Here you'll find FAQs, definitions, and training resources online 24-7. Remember, you can take advantage of your 14-day trial period and sign up anytime at GetSmartCharts.com. So now, when someone asks you, what's the hottest neighborhood in town? Or, what's the trend in property tax increases by county and city? SmartCharts Pro can help you craft a business strategy that will help you close a deal.